No means no. It's one of the shortest words in the English language, right? But did you notice that when you're on a car lot that the salesmen and finance officers actually act like they've never heard of it? Today we're cracking the mystery on that very hard to understand word. No. Hey, really nice to meet you. No. <laughs> Hi, I'm Kevin Hunter, also known as the Homework Guy and author of Is That the Best You Can Do? This video is brought to you by YouTube's best channel on car buying and selling, courtesy of the Homework Guy team. Another round of super high intensity training is coming your way with live role play. It's coming up for you car buyers. If you like the Homework Guy videos and you want to sport some awesome swag like this here, super high intensity training hoodie, well, check that merch shelf down below. We appreciate your support. Today we're going to hear real lines from real people who don't know the meaning of the word no. It's true. You know something really funny about the word no? In the car business, they don't assume you say no because you don't trust them. <laughs> Isn't that funny? Seems like a really obvious conclusion, but they have been trained to never think that. Oh no. They think you say no for totally different reasons, and they're going to help lead you to think you say no for reasons that they will try to put in your head. If you're fooled by the show, you'll start pitching in, actually helping them solve your reasons for saying no until you say yes. You don't think so? Well, buckle up, because this happens to a lot of you. Back with some real-life examples of the meaning of the word no in the car business, right after this short message from the Homework Guy team. If you're a first-timer on the Homework Guy channel, consider subscribing and leaving us a comment below. Add hashtag the Homework Guy if you'd like a response directly from Kevin or one of the Homework Guy staff members. We're always glad to help our loyal followers, and the best part is, there's no charge. You can also email the team at info at thehomeworkguy.com with a specific question, or if you'd like a free contract review, just black out your personal information and send it to us. We'd love to hear from you. Just be aware that we do get a lot of requests, so just be patient while you wait for a response. Back to you, Kevin. If you've ever been car shopping, and you have because you're here today, you notice that the moment you got on a car lot, the salesman starts trying to control you. You might not have seen the ticket booth when you drove onto the lot, but it's like you bought a ticket to the show. The guy or gal you meet is the actor or actress, and they will be providing entertainment that they believe you're willing to pay for. They get asked by their trainers, How good is your show? Are your customers willing to pay for it? I'm not kidding at all. What is even more interesting is that they actually think you love the show. They also think the show is a display of competence, and they refer to it as world-class customer service. Aww. But the show is just about getting around the word no. Each month, the salesmen on the lot are just competing to level up, move up, kill it, crush it. There is some serious swagger going on in those lots. And right from the word hello, they are in your face trying to take massive control of your thought process. How are they going to do this? My favorite line comes from a colonel I knew in the army. If you can't dazzle them with brilliance, well, baffle them with bullshit. Yeah. To throw you off and make you wonder what hit you, I present to you stage one. This could be your greeting to the car lot. Hi, guys. How are you doing? My name's Judas. Welcome to the store. Gosh, you got a beautiful family there. Hi there, little guy. Man, I'm so lucky to have met you guys. What's going on? Where did you drive from? Hey, would you like something to drink? This is the kind of stuff they're sure you'll like, and if they do it well, they believe you'll think of them as their guide. Because by coming on the car lot, you also signed up for the guide service that they provide. So why the guided tour? That pesky little word, no, doesn't mean what you think it does. Of all the things it could mean, no isn't one of them, and the guided tour helps stifle it. Since no doesn't mean no on a car lot, let's take a look at what they are trained to believe it means and why they ask so many questions the moment you say no. To a car salesman or a finance officer, the word no means, number one, you just aren't sure. And number two, you just haven't thought things through yet. This seems logically true because if you had a very high level of confidence that you were making the right decision, you might have said yes. So watch the salesman try to understand your low level of conviction with a bunch of questions. The salesman believes that he simply needs to raise your threshold of certainty and then you'll say yes. So they start the show by building rapport and certainty in themselves, in the dealership, in the car, in the products they will eventually try to sell you later as well. 
to get beyond a no, it's well taught in the car business that the salesman has to take control. They can't let you keep thinking what you're thinking because you'll keep saying no. So they try to smash it, take it down, move it through it, put you to bed and get on with the deal and not lose their customers. Sorry, I got a little on a roll there and threw out some of the lingo. Stolen right out of the car trainer's word track. So they teach salesmen to control you, to get you thinking what they want you to be thinking. It's like a Jedi mind trick, like hypnosis with a generous helping of BS. That's why you hear this type of greeting. Hi guys, how are you doing? My name's Judas. Welcome to the store. Gosh, you got a beautiful family there. Hi there, little guy. Man, I'm so lucky to have met you guys. What's going on? Where did you drive from? Hey, would you like something to drink? Once that's out of their mouth, it's moving to stage two to what they call fact-finding. They are assuming that you're on board and they are plowing full steam ahead. So you guys going to be replacing your car today? How long have you had it? Did you buy it new? Did you buy it pre-owned? It looks like you made a good choice. That's the one I would have gotten. What was the number one reason that you got this car three years ago? You give short answers because there are just so many questions, but the barrage of questions has a purpose. They will learn more just by asking you questions than anything else they do. And they are key because you're not thinking about the word no right now. And that sale door, well, it's officially kicked wide open. If they ask enough questions, you'll tell them everything. And if they know everything, they can control your responses and every move you make. Now, for those of you who want to break up this little party, or if you're just devious, and some of you are, well, here's what you should do to shatter that control module that's being formed around you. No matter what the salesman says or does, interrupt. Ask your own questions. Interrupt again and again. Be that person who doesn't let the salesman talk your head off and be that person who walks around every question like you were thinking of something else entirely. You weren't even listening to the question. If you interrupt, if you ask your own questions, if you don't really answer any of hers or his, all of this is referred to as you owning the salesman. He will be shamed by his peers when he walks back in the showroom as not having done his job. He'll be called order taker. It's a mental wrestling match in 3D. You need to win that match. If you're constantly interrupting, you get to say no in more ways than he has canned answers for. That's pretty cool. On the other hand, if you get lost in the guided tour and you don't interrupt the party, they are going to start harvesting what's known as pain. What you don't like about your car, why it doesn't work for you. Now, maybe how you got forced into it, why you came to the car lot in the first place, the poor treatment you got from those other guys, you know, those other shady dealers out there, but not these guys you're talking to today. And then comes stage three. You're going to land on the right car. Did you know that you were landing somewhere today? Well, maybe not, but now you're landing and on the right car, which brings us to stage four. They're going to ask for your business. It sounds something like this. Hey, look, guys, based on all the information you gave me, I feel like we have found the perfect car, perfect for your family. If I can get the numbers 100% to your satisfaction and it's the deal you're looking for, I'm assuming that surely you'd be happy to take it home. Am I right? Then you see that great big smile and nodding head looking you straight in the eye. Some of you say yes right here, but hopefully we've smartened up a few of you out there. This might be the first time you took a deep breath since the show started. It's kind of like intermission, and suddenly you remembered the word no again. Hey, have I said the word no yet? Uh-huh, no, you haven't. This might be a good time to use it, so you do. I just don't think we're ready for that. The inexperienced salesman will divert. He wants to pretend like he didn't even hear you say the word. The skilled salesman, however, does hear it, but he will pretend like you really didn't mean what you said by saying no when you said it. Like, no is so complex that even you don't know what it means when you're the one who says it. So he's going to overcome your no by showing you that you didn't really mean no. You were just meant something you weren't clear on or maybe just something else. And the pro standing in front of you is going to fill in the fog with instant clarity and conviction. Your no answer sounds like this. Uh, we have other cars to look at first. He was ready for you, though, because they train on this stuff. And he says... I completely understand. Let's say you've already been to see those other cars. What would be the deciding factor on which one of the cars you'd actually buy? Would it be the car itself? Or do you think it would be the great deal that the dealership might have been willing to give you? 
And in the end, what do you think it would be? You're stumped for a second because you had keys in your hand ready to hit the door, but now you have a question to answer. And because you're not this really rude person like a car salesman, you know, so you say... Yeah, it would probably be the, um, a great deal, yeah. Here's his next word track. Well, cool. So it's, it's not a matter of if you're going to buy, it's when. And when is when the deal is right. I mean, am I right? You don't like being pushed. You sigh and use another no phrase. I just don't think we're ready for that. His training kicks in again and he loops back to stage two, does the old horseshoe. The fact-finding stage, in less than a minute, he reminds you why you're here and why you took time to drive a car and ended up with him in the first place asking for your business. All the information that you put out when he was asking questions, but don't expect a challenge from the seasoned sales guy or even confrontation. That kind of stuff makes you suspicious. Instead, he's going to do something like this. Hey, guys, I totally understand. And I might be thinking what you're thinking, too. I apologize if I've asked for your business and it wasn't the right vehicle, but based on all the information that you've given me, you told me how your family has really grown and your needs have changed. And right now, your trade has a couple of service issues and the holidays are coming up and you guys don't really want to spend that extra money. And I know that money is a little bit of a concern and maybe you can buy whatever you want. If I could pay off your car and you didn't have to figure out any of that service expense, I just took care of everything. And also, you didn't have to make your next car payment, or you wouldn't have a first payment due for a month and a half. I mean, that would really ease the financial situation, wouldn't it? It would fix the service problems in the car, and you wouldn't have to spend that extra money to keep your old car running. And I know one thing for sure. Your wife says she likes the safety of this new car has to offer. So guess what? Mama's going to be safer. And I don't know that you wouldn't even try, actually, to put a price tag on safety for your wife and your little kids. If you had to write the check for that, what you think the safety would be worth for your family, you couldn't write that check. And I mean, am I right? There's no way you can put a price on safety. And we found a vehicle with a five-star crash rating, and it fits all your needs and wants. And then on top of that, it's got the full warranty, right? And don't worry, I've got you covered for oil changes and maintenance for the first 24 months. I mean, talk about peace of mind, right? Guys, I know this, having kids and being married, right? I know that coming out of the dealership is something you have a plan for. You might even have to have a babysitter. You don't just say, hey, let's stop the dealership on the way to the mall. This is a big deal, and you have a plan for it, and I know that your time is very important to you. And think about this. The only thing in life that's not refundable is time. Am I right? I mean, you can never get it back. So I know your time is extremely important to you, and my goal could save you some time and some money, and I could take your old vehicle that you know you're going to have to trade in anyway, and we found a car that's perfect for you. It has all the safety stuff we talked about, and you know you can't put a price on safety. And I can make that transition happen easily. Well, I know sometimes buying a car can be intimidating, and I never wanted that for us. I mean, I, I just want to help you. Uh, I just thought that if I could handle it, and I could make it the easiest transaction you've ever had at a dealership and give you world-class customer service and show you an amazing deal that you couldn't say no to, would you mind if I at least showed you a five-minute proposal of all the facts and figures? Of course, in the end, it's completely your decision. Would that be fair? Would you mind giving me the honor to serve you at the highest level today? Would that be okay? I guess it wouldn't hurt to do that. Whew. Think about something. Listen to this line. Of course, in the end, it's completely your decision. Would that be fair? Have you thought everything was your decision to this point? Have you thought you were just pushed down the hill because someone tricked you into climbing to the top of the ladder to see how steep the hill was? This entire spiel comes from the guy you said no to. In fact, you said no many times. He gives you all this because he's been trained to believe that you didn't know what you meant by no. We showed you this, taken straight out of the salesman's training classes to help you understand a very basic principle. If and when you say no, that's simply a trigger for the salesman to go back and ask more questions, like in stage two. Collect more info or remind you of info you already gave. Shotgun style, one question after the other. Tons of energy, tons of excitement, why you're here. Safety is so important. Why you couldn't write a check for that family safety. Why time isn't refundable. Even if you wasted tons of it right here today, talking to somebody who has only listened to you to manipulate you and wants to waste more of your time manipulating you for the next stage, which is likely to be several hours, not the five minutes he just mentioned. Since time is money, Leave people who manipulate you like this and leave people who don't understand one of the shortest words in the English language. No. If you got something out of this today and you love this format with the live role play examples, 
Let us know in the comment section down below. We'll be glad to offer more. As our return viewers know, the Homework Guy channel is home to some of the best videos on car buying and selling. Check them all out. It's the best stuff. Best car super high intensity training on YouTube. We've gone to a lot of work to help you out, so use the resources we put out there for you. If you enjoyed the video today, consider giving us that great big thumbs up. Leave a comment down below. Make sure you use hashtag the homework guy. Share the video on social media with the friends and family. And make sure to join us on Facebook and Twitter too. We post notifications and other updates on our other social media sites and answer car buying questions there too. If you love what we do and want to say thanks with a tip, the PayPal and Cash App links that you're seeing right here will be very easy to find down below in the description box. No problem if you can't do a tip. You can say thanks by sharing our videos with your family and friends and continue encouraging others to subscribe to this channel too. That's just huge. It's one of the most important things you can do as a loyal follower and viewer on the channel. We appreciate everything you do and help us get the word out and defeat those bad guys in the car business who still haven't learned that fairness and honesty is the best business model. Thanks everyone for coming back. Super high intensity training is just awesome stuff, is it not? We'll see you guys on our next video. You guys rock. I'm Kevin Hunter. Until next time. Take care, everyone.